At some point or another, most of you have probably thought about working on board a cruise ship. Now the reasons why may vary. Maybe you want to travel, maybe you want to save some money, or it's possible that you just want to party it up and have some crazy adventures. But regardless of the reason, when it comes to considering a contract or if you're about to start a contract, everyone is naturally curious as to what this taboo world as a crew member may be like. As somebody that's worked for cruise lines like Carnival and NCL, I've seen a lot and even though I enjoy my overall experience, today I'm going to talk about 10 things that I hated about working on board cruise ships. Now before we dive into this, I gotta put a little disclaimer out there, things are not going to be so straightforward across the board. Things could be different depending on various factors like the cruise line you're working for, the position you're in, and how long you've been on cruise ships. Also keep in mind that all of this is pre-pandemic, so things may have drastically changed. So the first thing I hated about working on board cruise ships is the workload or hours that you work. Now this is something that is widely known when it comes to working on cruise ships. The crew members are working a lot. Some are working 7 days a week, up to 12 hours per day, and the worst part about all of this is, nobody on board is getting overtime. Those hours are considered to be normal. Now the reasoning as to why these extreme working hours are even possible are due to two reasons. The first reason is for the simple fact that everybody working on board a cruise ship, even the captain, is technically not an employee of any particular cruise line. So they have to essentially fulfill whatever duties that they signed up for. The second reason is because every cruise ship that you work for, for the most part, is not going to be flagged in a developed country such as the United States, the UK, or Australia. They do what's called wave a foreign flag or a flag of convenience. Now I could do a full-fledged video talking about all this because it's really detailed, very complicated stuff but in a nutshell they wave flags of convenience like let's say a bohemian flag that way they can dodge taxes and labor laws now within those outrageous working hours is the second thing that I hated about working on board the cruise ship and it's something that everybody that's been on a ship before whether you be a guest or a crew member can relate to and that is the boat drills we all know how it goes at the beginning of the cruise we're all packed into a room like sardines given a life jacket and then told instructions that realistically nobody's going to remember or follow should we turn into the sequel of the titanic taking all of this into consideration imagine doing this literally every single week for six to nine months straight on top of dealing with a bunch of guests that left their brains in the car because they're on vacation mode now thankfully due to the pandemic things are starting to go digital when it comes to the boat drill and all i gotta say is good riddance now, of course, when you take all this into account, the working hours and the boat drill and everything else that comes with working on board a cruise ship, you would assume that you can get a decent meal, right? Well, the third thing that I hated about working on board cruise ships is the food. So when you're working on board a cruise ship as a crew member, you get the honor and privilege of eating somewhere called the mess. There, you get the amazing choices of mystery meat, rice, and more rice. Now to be fair, depending on your position on board, you could be lucky enough to eat at the guest areas. However, after a while, these places do kind of melt together and everything tastes the same. Except for, of course, the Oreo cheesecake with NCL. God, I miss that stuff. It will probably be pretty rare that you are able to enjoy guest food unless you're in one of those higher positions. Which leads me to my fourth thing that I did not like about working on board the cruise ship, and that is the hierarchy. So while working on board a cruise ship, there is both an authoritative and social ranking among the crew, ranging from the course of captain and officers to the entertainment, all the way down to the waiters in every other position. Now, of course, this is naturally expected because it's like this literally everywhere else in the world with every other job. However, if you are able to be in one of those higher positions, you get the good food, you get the good looking girls and guys that you want to hook up with, and of course, you get the respect. Now from personal experience, when I was working for NCL, I was in the premier Broadway show on board. So I had one of those higher rankings. I got my own room, I had privileges that the other crew members didn't get, but unfortunately the downside to all of that is that everybody else that was in a similar position as me had a big ego. And unfortunately, even if we didn't, because I talked to everybody on board, didn't matter if you were a waiter or a maitre d', people still did not like me on board for the simple fact of them saying that I quote, live the good life and that I have no idea what it's like to be one of those crew members in that lower ranking. Now even if you were fortunate enough to be in one of those higher positions, unfortunately there was something that still affected everybody, which is the fifth thing that I hated about working on board cruise ships, and that is all the rules and regulations. As a crew member, regardless of your position, you'll learn very quickly that there are a lot of things that you can and cannot do. Now of course these regulations are put into place in order to keep the crew, as well as everybody on board safe. However, looking at these rules and regulations in some way, shape, or form, they'll have you feeling essentially like a kid with strict parents or in another way, a prisoner. 
Also, you will have limited access to what we call shore leave. That's when we are in a port of call and you want to go explore somewhere. Let's say we're in Bermuda, you want to go explore Bermuda. Well, you have a limited amount of time if you're lucky enough to have that day off and time to actually go spend in the port as far as when you can get off the ship and when you can be back, which normally is before the guest. And they let you know the time before you even get off the ship. Now, like I said, that's if you're lucky. For a lot of the crew members, they have to do something known as port manning which means even if they have the technical day off, they have to stay on board the ship should something happen like an emergency. Also, whatever it is that you're used to having at home, like for example, a toaster or anything of that nature is considered a fire hazard on board. Even things like liquor on board your ship, you can't have in the cabin because it's all part of the rules. Now looking at all these limitations, naturally you can assume that you're at least going to have some place nice and comfortable to lay your head down, right? Well, the sixth thing that I hated about working aboard cruise ships is the living accommodations. So this one is often a huge deal breaker for anyone that has a desire to work on board a cruise ship because it's without a doubt a big adjustment. Yes, of course, you're going to be in a tiny room, but to make things worse, well, you will probably have a roommate depending on your position, and this happens 9 times out of 10. Now, the only saving grace here is that maybe you and this roommate will get along and that you guys will work the same hours. Now, some people are lucky enough to have their own cabin, and if they're really fortunate, they'll get what's called an officer cabin. You get your own window, and it's a larger space, but typically that's reserved for entertainers and high-ranking crew members like, of course, the officers. When I was working on board, I did have my own what's called a petty officer cabin. If you want to see it, I did do a tour when I was working on board the cruise ship, I'll leave it up here and in the description box below. Now looking at all this, naturally of course you're going to assume that if the living accommodations aren't up to par and you're working a lot, at least you're getting paid, right? Well, the seventh thing that I hated about working on board cruise ships is unfortunately the pay. Now for some crew members that are working on board the ship that are from, let's say, less developed countries, working on board the ship gives them the best opportunity to make the most money that they're ever going to make. And for others, things can be a little bit different. So regardless of how much money you're making, a big problem that the crew members face is potentially going broke during your contract. I've seen it happen. Now this is typically among the people who are doing their first or second contract and the people that don't have good spending habits. Naturally, there are going to be crew members that have to send money home to feed their family, their kids. Whatever the reason may be, it's understandable. However, there are a lot of temptations and things that you can do on board the ship that will leave you broke. For example, if you have a day off and you go do a shore excursion, those add up pretty quickly. Those dollar beers that you're buying at the crew bar, well, if you worked on a cruise ship, you know. By the time the month is over, you got hundreds of dollars in fees from buying the beer, right? And then on top of that, don't get me started on the Wi-Fi because it adds up quicker than you think, making those phone calls back to home. Now, even if the pay isn't so great at times, at least you have a good, decent job that's stable and secure, right? Nope. The eighth thing that I hated about working on board cruise ships is the lack of security. One little slip up can get you fired. I've seen it plenty of times. Getting too drunk at the crew bar, returning back to the ship from a port of call late. There are a lot of things that can happen. Now most of this stuff is pretty standard. If you're late for work or something like that, you are going to get fired. However, on the ship, it's a little bit different and slightly more extreme. Now moving on, while working on board the ship, you're going to meet a lot of beautiful and interesting people. Which leads me to the ninth thing I hated about working on board cruise ships, and that is the relationships. So I'm gonna be straight into the point on this one. I'll be talking about, of course, relationships as far as friends and romantic relationships. When you're working on board the cruise ship, you are lucky enough to have the opportunity to be surrounded by people from all over the world. It's cool because you couldn't do this anywhere else. If you wanna go see somebody from another country, unless you happen to run into them, well, you gotta go to that actual country. So it's a cool environment, but it does have its goods and bads. Goods meaning you could find somebody if you're American from Russia, fall in love, and there you go. Or you could end up being best friends with that person as well. But the problem with all of this, whether it be a friendship or a romantic relationship, is that after the contract is over, you have the decision to make. You have a big decision to make at that. You have to decide if you're either going to fly over to that country to see said person, or if you're going to wait till the next contract. If not, you guys will literally never see each other again. Also on this point too, while working on board the ship, you have a lot of people that essentially pretend to be somebody that they're not. You'll see somebody that's married or has been in a long-term relationship, and unfortunately, they'll get on the ship and lie and say that they are single and they are looking for some fun. You'll see people that are married with kids that end up switching to the other team while they're working on board their ship. All kinds of crazy things happen, and unfortunately, it's just kind of the normal environment working on board the ship. So if you've made it this far, congratulations. You've pretty much survived another episode of The Ship Life. 
Now, I gotta talk about this last one. It has to be said, the 10th thing that I hated about working on board cruise ships is the guest. Now, don't get me wrong when I say this, the vast majority of guests that are on board cruise ships are actually amazing people, but I'm talking about the entitled ones. And if you've ever worked on board a ship, or even if you've been a guest on a cruise ship, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You have the ones that think the world is there just because they bought the standard stateroom cabin with no balcony. Look, even if you did buy, let's say, on NCL the Haven Suite, you do not get to treat the workers on board like crap and you do not get to yell at everybody. I've seen this happen on multiple occasions. I've seen guests yell at crew members because they don't speak good enough English. I've seen all kinds of things and I could go over the story all day long. There are a million things to talk about when it comes to this guys, but straight up the crew, they naturally just try their best because they're there to give the guests the overall greatest experience for that particular cruise. And honestly, I think we all can agree they do an amazing job at doing so. Now you can imagine that post pandemic, the crew members are going to have to work a lot harder and their jobs will be a lot stressful. So a word of advice guys, I'm not going to elaborate on this too much because I'm not going to talk badly about guests on board ships. We all know how it is. There are of course the good people and there are bad apples. End of story. But moral of the story here is guys, tip your crew members well and of course be nice to all of them because you never know what they could be going through. They are working a lot of hours and they are pretty much tired a lot of the time and they're away from home from their family and they could have kids. But anyway guys, those are my 10 things that I hated about working on board cruise ships. There's a lot of other things that I could have talked about. Now speaking of which, if you happen to be a crew member, let me know if there was something that I missed or if I should make a part two because I could have kept going on this all day long. Also, if you're a guest, are you surprised by any of this? Let me know in the comment section below. I'm going to wrap this video up, guys. I hope you enjoyed this installment of Ship Life. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button on your way out, subscribe to the channel, and if you want to support the channel further, please check out joining the Ship Life crew. If you join the Ship Life crew, you get exclusive access to all kinds of perks and bonuses like priority in the comment section, you get exclusive access to videos that the general public will not see, and so much more. So please consider it. I hope you guys are doing well out there and take it easy. Hey, what's going on everybody? Thanks for watching today's video. If you want to check out more content, you can check it out here, here, and if you want to subscribe, it's right over here. You guys take it easy.